Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining so promptly. This is the February 3rd meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee as we march forward um, toward on this exciting project. Um, and to, uh, once I call everyone to make sure you can hear and be heard, we're going to move right into an agenda, including planning for the next. Um, meetings um, and and potentially a subcommittee, as you could see on the agenda. So first, I'm going to make sure that everyone can hear and be heard. Um, and I'll call out names as I see them on my screen. Paul. Present. Mike. Present. Jonathan. Good morning. Good morning. Ben. Present. Rupert. Present and accounted for. Tammy. Hi, good morning. Tammy is here to, to, in high energy mode. Sean. Here. Simone. Here. And Alicia. Here. And Alicia, thank you so much for making whatever you're doing, the magic you're doing, making your work schedule work with the, the meeting schedule. Thank you. Um, it's fantastic. So with that, um, as others join us, I will we'll just do a, a check, but I'm turning it over to Margaret to show the agenda. All right, can everybody see the agenda? I can, so I think as long as one of us can, we all can. Okay, so um, we are, going to, I'm going to quickly go over the agenda. The big items today are we're going to talk a little bit about soft costs. We're going to start with project with the furniture fixtures and technology because we have gotten some information lately that makes us think we should bump that number up a little bit. So we'll explain that in detail. Um, the Danisco team is going to go over the table of contents, um, which is to, just to summarize where we are and to make sure that you know what kind of materials you'll be reviewing. Then I am going to revisit the project costs and walk through the, um, the overall soft costs as well as the milestones to get to the debt exclusion vote. And then Kathy has a couple of subcommittees she wants to talk about as well as community forum report and then we'll revisit the timeline. We don't have any invoices today, so that will be it. Okay, so um, let's start out with the furniture, fixtures and equipment piece of this. So um, I'm actually just gonna pull a quick summary up. Um, you know, we haven't in this group, <clears throat> we haven't really dug into the specific soft costs and. I want to say that um, you know both budgets need to be thought of as a budget that sort of protects the community from increased costs at a point in the design when we are actually kind of far from buying stuff. So um, what's happened most recently with the furniture is Donna and I had put our heads together several months ago and established what we thought was a reasonable reasonable budget for um, furniture, fixtures, and equipment and technology. I'm just gonna pull up a slide and show you this. Whoops, there we go. Um, hang on a second. Donna's gonna explain the detail of this, but this, this is the sort of high-end version. So we have 575 students. Um, the MSBA actually gives a, a healthy subsidy for these projects of $1,200 per student. So in the original budget um, that we, I, we've been working with, we have been using $1,850 per student for furniture, fixtures, and equipment, $1,650 for technology. But recent bidding has suggested that we should bump that number up a little bit. So. Donna's going to walk through this, but what we're recommending today is that that number be increased to $2,000 per student. It's a budget number, right? So we don't, um, and Donna's got quite a bit of detail to show you 
that's behind this, but um, I'm going to turn it over to Donna to kind of Donna and Tim and Rick to get into more detail about this. Sure, sure. Um, I wasn't going to bring up all the detail, but I certainly can. Um, <laughs> but with, with, I mean, it literally is counting chairs, tables, desks, um, and then budget allowances for equipment. But like the construction market, the um, we call it FF&E, furnitures, fixtures, and equipment, uh, has, has also been affected by this market. As you can imagine, a lot of the material is the same and um, and and then the market conditions themselves as far well as delivery, et cetera. So uh, in recognizing, um, we actually just had a bid opening two days ago. And so we have like real, real data to support um, these numbers, unfortunately, but at least you're in a position now to um, be proactive as opposed to trying to figure out how, how you're still going to be able to furnish the um, entire new school. So we, we have contingencies and escalation built into these numbers. So similar to what we did for the construction, we have uh, line item numbers. Happy to share those. Those will be going in with the MSBA. We have a, a, a FF&E consultant that this is what they do for a living. So They've reached out to manufacturers. This is also utilizing MSBA's uh, CPP program, which is a procurement program where they say, look, we have 10 schools all buying furniture. We want the best price from you manufacturers. As, and so they're pooling their resources to get perceived better rates. Um, so, all we can do is try to protect Amherst by utilizing escalation and contingency in these numbers. Um, we did base it on the room data sheets that we went through with the staff to identify what their specific requirements are in every classroom, making sure we have enough chairs so kids aren't dragging their chairs around the building when they have to go to a small group space. Um, and what we've done is allocated a allowance for equipment. And that would be for anything from music equipment to kitchen wares to um, uh, maintenance equipment. So we wanna make sure that we have money established for a snowblower or for a lift or those types of equipment. And it's premature to be getting into the detail of all of those. So what we've done is we've just established a budget recognizing um, that you're, you're gonna need all of this equipment. The other thing that we've done is in speaking with Mike and uh, recognizing there is no real value in a lot of the uh, furniture that are at the two schools. So we are saying that this is going to be fully new furniture for the new school. So um, with that, we'll sh be sharing it. I, I mean, I, I could bring it up now. It's gonna, you know, literally is we need 24 chairs in every classroom, a desk for every student, stools. It's um, very detailed. So it's, it's very similar to sort of the budget, but all of that will go behind this. But again, we have escalation in there, 3% annually until bid and then um, some contingency built in. Kathy. Hi, I, I, I have just a, a comment and a question. You know, to the extent people want to see the detail, we can post it in today's packet. Um, we can just send right. it in. But my understanding, Donna, um, is that uh, as we get over the hump of getting the school financed, you know, the vote on the school, this will be interactive. So you haven't already picked the chair or picked the table, correct? This is, would you, so your emphasis on the word is it's a budget. Um, yes, yes. That, 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 that's during that period. So, you know, I just, you know, just for my own, um, I think, you know, the, the teachers, some of the classroom people, principals, everyone. So that is all gonna continue in terms of needs. Yes, is that correct? 
Yes, and thank you. So we um, have visited several schools, right? Um, our goal at, at Danisco is to ensure that the furniture that is selected is quality furniture that will last for many, many years. So we don't go high end, um, just given given the market and everything. And, and we certainly don't wanna always go with the lowest because we know they'll fall apart in five years. So yes, we, we have selected a, like a, a solid medium range um, kind of quality that what we know will provide um, value for years to come that will be in the school for years to come and won't fall apart. But we will, <laughs> we'll get into all of the detail. And Kathy, that actually comes much later um, in the process. We'll continue to monitor the costs of these items, but we we probably won't be revisiting it in earnest until we're into construction because every year manufacturers change their styles, their looks, their whatever. And um, we would probably be going out to bid six months before we want the furniture in, in the school. Yeah, I, I just um well, I just want to add, Kathy, are you done? Yeah, I was just gonna say, so the six months before you said you've built in inflation for that's when you're going to be buying it. So you're not saying we're purchasing it in 2024. Correct. That's what okay. Correct. And I would say most of this bump up in this number is reflecting that, right? That we we are we have we know the schedule now. We the inflation is in, in fact the other thing that's going to come up that I'll talk about in soft cost review is also impacting insurance. So the only two increases to um, the soft cost budget we're recommending today from what everybody's seen before: builders' risk and furniture, and it, it's directly related to inflation. Okay. Um, I just want to say, um, and I know um, some of the folks on this call know this particularly, you know, Tammy and Mike, um, it, the, the furniture that is available now um, for classroom use is just phenomenal. And it makes a phenomenal difference in teaching. And, you know, it, it has a lot to do with ergonomics, but it also has a lot to do with the fact that kids need to move. So the furniture that we're buying today is furniture that allows kids to move in the classroom, kids who are fidgety, you know, kids. And it's it's just, I just think the furniture piece of this can be transformational, even, even in, ex, in an existing building. So, um, you know, I really want to endorse what the work that I have seen that Danisco has done on this. And it, it is a really important contributing factor to making a new school environment. Yeah, Margaret, it's funny. Um, you know, when you walk through a school, when it's, when it's completed, all people see are the colors and, and the furniture. Right, no one knows yeah. all of the effort that went behind the wall. <laughs> so it really, it really, and in our opinion, kind of makes the project a success, right? Because it's the yeah. users actually um, experiencing it. Yeah, and we'll get into colors. There are many colors. There's, there's this really takes a life of its own, and um, we'll, we'll again be visiting other schools. Uh, at, at by the time we get here, the schools that we've seen, you know, are going to be dated. So we'll we'll get into visiting new schools with different types of furniture. We will bring in samples. We would like to involve um, someone, maybe an o uh, occupational therapist or ther you know a physical therapist, to make sure that ergonomically they work. And it, there's a huge amount of thought and effort that goes into this process. So, Margaret, can I? I want to make sure Allison. Allison has joined us. Allison, can okay. you hear and can we hear you? If you could just do a. Hello. Yes. Hi. Welcome. Great. Thank you. Okay. So, um, the reason that we're talking about this today is that one of the pieces that's going to be in this in the schematic design package is this total project budget form. So when we get to the point um, 
that we're reviewing that with you. Um, unless anybody has any concerns about this recommendation, this updated number will be embedded in that. So I'm, I'm not seeing any hands. So I think um, um, I actually, Tam, Tammy, several of us did a couple of these school visits and the chairs were fun for adults to sit on, fidgety adults. Um, so, <laughs> so, so thank you. So I, I think we can move to the next item. So I think you've got an endorsement for, for what you're recommending. Okay. Um, so the next item Donna wants to talk about the table of contents, um, which I have open if you want me to open it or you guys can open it. What's your preference? Uh, go for it. Okay. Let, let's keep the screen sharing simple this morning. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so similar to the PSR, we have been sharing with you throughout this process, all of the items that need to, that will be submitted to MSBA, right? So, so this is a compilation of all the work that we've done um, for the past, I, I, I think it's been over eight months um, or six months. So if just, if you wanna scroll through it, um, as, as we were saying at the very beginning, when we were looking at spaces, uh, DESI, which is uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary education uh, they yep uh, item one they will be reviewing they've already reviewed your ed program they they think it's fabulous so that's great now what they're going to do is we have a package that we have to submit to them where they're going to see where all of the special education spaces are going there's a description that has to go along with it as well as a letter submitted by the district just again, reiterating everything that we've said. So they will review that concurrently with MSBA reviewing the schematic design package. And we anticipate there being no issues whatsoever. It's incredibly inclusive and the special ed spaces and programs are embedded with the academics. So that's gonna be one submission. Um, it will be as part of the binder, but just to let you know that they're going to be submitting that. The introduction is just a summary of all of the other uh, sections as part of this. We have the final design program. Um, yeah, with... the total project budget. This is the piece that I'm going. I'm saying you've seen the roll up of this, but it will have more detail. So yeah, and, and that's a separate line. So the introduction is just a summary of all the other parts of this. Just for MSBA to kind of have, it's an executive summary is really what it is. Uh, the final design program is everything that we've been working through. It's those space summaries that will now be finalized um, with no changes as, as everyone knows, as we've rolled those up and shared with you. And, and again, everything that we've um, been discussing and talking about throughout the um, project. The traffic analysis we've shared, you have that. Um, any additional uh, environmental assessments or geotech or geoenvironmental, the only things that we have to submit there are the results of the um, well, the test well that we've done. So we'll be including those. We have a code consultant for item six that we'll be looking at and making sure that, you know, all, all of our egresses and other requirements are met. And, and he'll be weighing in on that. Seven, I don't believe we have any updates. Um, we, you've seen them all. We have a massing study to share with MSBA. The life cycle cost analysis people are familiar with as we've talked about um, which systems we wanna use. We've done a hydrant flow test, so that will be included as well. The sustainable building design guidelines, um, what we, I don't, I don't think that we have shared a scorecard, and it's a lead scorecard. Um, but we are tracking gold, and Margaret and Kathy. Maybe that's something that we could put on the agenda for the, for the next week. But again, similar to a lot of what we're doing now, 
we're very confident we're going to achieve league gold and the scorecard will show us how we're doing that. And again, it's all embedded in all of the work that we've been doing. Uh, again, our accessibility analysis and compliance. Um, this is an MSBA project, which is a state funded project, which requires us to submit to the Mass Historic Commission. That's the MHC. So we'll be, yep, go ahead. John, I see Alicia has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Stop for a second okay. before we go to yes. Alicia. No, it's okay. Thank you, Donna. I was just wondering if when you all are working on these things that they can be made available to the committee like in portion. So when each like number is finished so that we don't have to wait to the end to have a huge giant document to be reviewing. Uh, sure. I, um, I, I'm not trying to dismiss your comment. I'm just thinking through the process. Yeah, we, we should be able to group a bunch of these at a time. Alicia, I, I think, you know, we're not going to just send nine or 12 or whatever, but just because we've got a lot of people working on these in tandem, but that's a great suggestion. And we can probably share a lot of, a lot of the work that we've completed for some for some of these items so that you're focusing on some of the other items as we complete it. Kathy? Um, just Donna, when we're gonna get to sort of in, in going with what Alicia's question is, when we're gonna get to next meetings, one possibility is that if there are some key pieces that we haven't seen like the lead scorecard and, and, and those are succinct, if you send them to the full committee and we post them, then we don't have to do it in pieces in terms of a review. We can do it together, but we get them in advance. So that yeah. might, we can talk about agenda on whether we want to meet next week to look at pieces or we want to wait and look at the whole, but receive pieces. And so I realize some of them are not, some of them are not as separable um, right. and, and some we've seen already. So Alicia, would that address what your, your things that we haven't seen, make sure we get them? Um, I'm just looking to see whether that, because some of the, these pieces are interactive with others. So, you know, getting a few pages wouldn't make any sense, but it sounds like that lead table or the equipment, the FF&E table, you know, a few of them you're gonna have, you're just gonna be putting them in. Um, Correct, yeah. And some Alicia, of them, yeah, yeah, thank you. Well, yeah, thank you, Kathy. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, you know, some of them are us having to just finalize them, put them, put them in the proper format, proper header, footer, like all of that. And so um, I, I certainly, Tim and I can take a look and see what we can quickly um, complete and, sub, you know, kind of get it off our, our plate and available for you all to look at. Okay, and I think the intent is not to slow you down or create extra work. So it's, you know, like you're, you're going to have to use judgment on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there are some things and, and some of them may not be 100% complete, but we can certainly issue the scorecard, even though we might not have all the certifications that support it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, let me bring that back up. <clears throat> All righty, so yep. I'm gonna keep scrolling here. Thanks. And, and I, I guess what I do wanna say for the lead scorecard, um, we have shared it. I think it was part of the submittal for the PSR, but now that we have more information, right? So I, I just recognize yeah. it's important to everyone. Uh, we will be submitting a project notification to Mass Historic. Uh, we can share the room data sheets. Those room data sheets are meeting after all of the meetings we've had with staff. I don't, I don't believe we've shared these in detail with everyone, but those, how, this, how the rooms are laid out and the type of furniture and equipment that are required for each of the staff to um, you know, be as flexible and, and uh, provide the instruction that is helpful both for the FF&E um, budget because that identifies all the furniture, but it also helps us understand where the plugs and the outlets and the data drops and where the sinks go. So, so we can share those um, 
pretty quickly as well. I just want to comment the mass historic notification is required because the building is more than 50 years old, but it's just a notification. So. No, it's 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 because MSBA it's a publicly funded project and MSBA right. makes us submit right. them regardless. Are, of and they they will comment if they meet, the project meets two triggers, which is state money and another regulatory approval which in this case is uh dep wetlands mm -hmm. yeah. um construction methodology methodology we're just going to give a quick write-up that we've looked at both uh hard cm or dbb margaret's going to go through the budget um what we yeah. did yeah what, what we didn't touch on was the technology budget and that too we should be able to send now for everyone's um review what what that is a very similar we've met with jerry champagne mike um, and some other folks within the district to determine the appropriate uh technology equipment that would be um staff and student devices that includes the interactive projectors in the classrooms. It includes the phone system, your switches and network and uh, wireless access points throughout the entire school, et cetera. So that will accompany, the detail will accompany the total project budget as well. Um, we all have seen the cost estimates. We will include those, including the list that arrived us at the 80, I think it's 81.5 million. Uh, we have an updated work plan that is uh, very just standard. And then we will require the local actions and approvals, which is the votes and then the minutes that accompany those and the project manual, um, which you have all seen, it's really outline specifications but those are what we gave to the cost estimator as well as the drawings. So all of this really is just putting all of the hard work that we've all been working on and just putting a little, putting them in proper buckets with a pretty bow on it. That's all I have. I, I don't know. So I, Alicia, thank you. Um, happy, happy to send. Oh, I just see a cat jumping behind Jonathan. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but well, we're happy to go ahead and and uh, send off as much as we can as early as possible. So, Kathy, um, I think the the thing we should we do want to commit to is having the complete package available. And I think the date we were targeting was the 14th, February 14th. Um, so do we want to revisit that? I mean, I think it sounds like we're going to try and put stuff that's done out sooner, but the complete package to be available by the 14th. So the question, um, I'll just pose it to the whole committee. We had originally um, we had initially thought we would meet next Friday, which would be the 10th, and then we would meet on the 17th to look at the whole report um, and vote on it. So since it's difficult to do it, lots of it in pieces and a full draft won't be ready by next Friday, the question is, should we skip a meeting next week? but be getting some pieces and then Denisco would be committing, to getting us to the um, the full draft. And since it's an enormous document, the full draft would be, as we asked for it last time, we, we would have it available so you could download just chapter one if you wanted to, or just chapter two if you wanted to. Um, as so, so I'm putting it out as to the committee, would um, you want to, delete the February 10th, the next Friday meeting, get some pieces, but then know that you're going to get the whole whole document on uh, the 14th, which is 
um, and and that gives them time to be working on pulling this giant document together rather than trying to excerpt pieces. So I'm I'm looking for any reactions um from people. So I'm not trying to eliminate a meeting, just to eliminate a meeting if people feel it would be a useful interim meeting, but that's what's gonna be happening between today's meeting and next, this this entire report is being pulled together. Paul? Yeah, <clears throat> I think that's a good proposal, um, Kathy. I think meetings take time to prepare for, to sit in and then to uh, clean up from, to administer whatever. So if there, if, and that's not really, the work is the work that they have to do to put this this uh for this uh report together i'd rather have our consultant spending time doing that work and then sharing it out with us uh versus sitting with us in a meeting and just so people know the 14th would be a tuesday before the friday that we that they're committing to so we'd be getting the report in all its pieces and we would have a thorough just we to the extent there we could vote on it with um recommended changes you know i mean we could vote on it as an amended so rupert oh i'd like to agree with paul i think that it makes sense to focus on uh, getting the products together um i understand there may be some discussion about some subcommittee work and that if we cancel that meeting it might free up some time for that kind of stuff so is there, uh, I'm just looking for, does anyone disagree with that um, in terms of they'd like an interim? So I'm not seeing any, any no's. So I think what we're, we're saying, Donna and Tim, is to send things are separable, send them to us, you know, including at the end of today or Monday morning. And then we're going to be expecting on the 14th to get full, meaning there might, I know, Margaret, you have to pull like all our minutes, all our meetings, there's going to be lots of pieces that none of us are going to want to read <laughs> um well because you know, you've all you've all read them right <laughs> we, we've already read them but but we're going to get the full draft report on the 14th so that's we're eliminating february 10th as a meeting yeah okay. and kathy um you know we we were asking for the february 14th as um a, a deadline date for us if we can get it done sooner. Um, we're happy to get it to you sooner. It's just um, a matter of, again, it's just dotting the I's and crossing the T's for making sure it's, you know, in MSBA format, so to speak, or final format. But uh, again, 90% of all, all of the work that we're putting together has been done and reviewed with everyone. It really is just a matter of pulling it all together. But if we can get it out sooner, we we will be happy to, but absolutely no later than the 14th. Okay. Okay, so that is the plan. Um, so on, on the, um, before we go to the Margaret part, we, we, when we left off two weeks ago, we had this massive list of possible cost changes with options. We voted on an option list that is now being carried. Um, and my understanding is, um, well, I'll ask it as a question. We've got the two cost estimator estimates. We will be showing that five point, I think it's 5.3, but anyway, the, the reduction that we came up with, we'll be showing that, but we'll be also be showing the potential list, things that we didn't take. Is that correct in the document? To MSBA. That, that is correct. Yeah, that is MSBA, yeah, MSBA wants to make sure that we have um, items on a list for potential future, that, that we're still thinking about that, yeah. Okay, and when we, when we sent the summary, and when Margaret sent the summary back to us and we posted it, there was a discussion, um, actually we had some public comments and uh, and it was a question of whether we could reduce the wood, I'll call it wooden tree budget, and put back an equivalent amount of money into the fields budget so that the softball field backstops were in. And uh, Danisco put together, those would be equivalent. So those can be on this list. I mean, we can make those decisions later. And I just want to report on trees. Dave Zomack um, offered 
So we had one public offering, but he said, you know, knowing that we're going to want some logs and others as the tree warden is doing work around town, we can save those. You know, I mean, there's a way of preserving them so we don't have to then buy them so that th some of those reductions can be real. So that was um, a possible alternative that's being carried uh, on. It's it's on that VE list. We didn't take it. So I just want to make sure people know that that is in, in the list right now. Um, so uh, I I think that is right. And then my other question is looking forward as we get past the, the school, hopefully the very positive support on the second, um, there will be other opportunities as you start to do this to look at things like outdoor sidewalks, amount of pavement, materials we're using outside. So we're looking at some of these are in the potential design mode and they've been priced out, but those can be changed later if they're cost reducing and you and come back as recommendations. So I think that is, I mean, that would be one of the things we would be working on with you as a committee. So we don't have to say this is the final list of potential areas. Um, so so with, Alicia has her hand up. Yeah, so I just, I just want to do that as a, also for the public, we're, we're by no means done. We're not building this school till 2024. <laughs> yeah. So Alicia. Alicia, you, you can unmute and I'm calling you. Thank you. Um, sorry, I just had a couple of questions. One, just for clarity, Kathy. So in what you were just saying, is the backstop added back to that potential list? Is that we, what you were saying? If, if we want to, there's an equivalency we could take. So we stay at the same estimate we did that we showed publicly. We could mm -hmm. take that amount of money out of wood and put the backstops back in. So um, if, 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 if that is something the committee wants to do, we can change that list now. And again, this okay. is all into, looking into the future. There might be other things we actually need to cut out of the budget or change in the budget as a total. So... Okay, so I'm hoping that we can do that now because I, I just worry that if we're going to take out the meeting that we're going that would have been happening next Friday that we should have that discussion now. Um, and then we should that way we can have an updated list of what those items are because I have other suggestions and contributions if if that's something that we could talk about now. Okay, I, I think. Well, well, let me ask the committee, Paul's hand is up. So on that one, that's an easy one because it's been priced out and it doesn't change the design of the building. Um, it's not major. And so if it's equivalency, we could as a committee decide to take it now. So Paul. Yeah, I think it's a bad practice to do this equivalency approach. I think if we have cost savings, we should take those cost savings. If, if we have funds that we can put into the project, we should look at what our options are for that and say, okay, here are our priorities. I haven't, I have not talked about or weighed in on a, the value of a backstop versus different um, uh, space, you know, something else for the kids. So I don't, I, I'm really not prepared to say yes, backstop versus no backstop or anything. They're both, I, I haven't just, we just haven't had that level of detail and I'm not sure if we need to have that at this moment in time. So I'm I'm looking um, if I just want to check whether anyone else has a comment. Um, then I'll call Donna. You have a comment, and then back to Alicia. Yeah, thanks. And and Margaret can chime in as well. But this, a lot of these items, um, we're, we're going to continue to evaluate and discuss all of these items. There were some other items on the list as well that don't impact the design or the work that we're going to do as soon as the project moves forward. So, um, you know, maybe market conditions will shift and, and different decisions will be made going forward. So in our opinion, this isn't um, an absolute for a lot of these items. I mean, some of the items, yes, we absolutely are, are going to take like the mechanical equipment and the valves out and all of that. But a lot of these other items are more it's going to sound bad, cosmetic in nature than, than the overall impact. So 
Well, they're not as they're not as wound in in a complicated way to the building design. So there, it's it's really I, I do agree <clears throat> with Paul. I think that there, and I want to reiterate. I mean, this is an incredibly early level of design to be setting a budget. There is it looks like it's finished and the decimal points make you think it's finished, but there is so much work still to come. So the process we've been through will continue. Um, I would personally rather, um, it's not up to me, but I think it might be more appropriate to list items as, um, you know, things com as comments we've received from the community that we will be looking at in design development to sort of incorporate into the project through appropriate um, review of, of the project scope. So Alicia, you wanted to, you wanted to say something further? Um, yeah, I was just wondering, so if we are thinking that this is not the appropriate time to go through those kinds of details, when would be the appropriate time to do so? And I still am wondering, though, that if things could be added to the list of things that we have, or if we're saying that we don't want to do that either. I guess I'm just still slightly unclear as to what we're saying we don't want to happen right now, and if we don't want it to happen right now, when will it happen? And then how will that affect all of this documentation and the next steps that we're taking in the process? Well, what I would suggest, you know, way back at the beginning of the process when there were like so many good questions that we needed to sort of take in sequence, I created a section in the meeting minutes where I was sort of, you know, what we call a parking lot, right? In some contexts where we said, these are comments that we've heard that we need to follow up on. And, and we've maintained that. And over time, there's really, there's one comment that's still on there, but it's going to continue. I would definitely suggest if there are other comments we want to add, the, the backstop thing, I think would be a great item that we create the same set of condition in the meeting minutes. There's a record of them. It's, it's part of the record that goes in as part of the schematic design submittal. And then when we pick up with design development, we can go back and take a look at that list and say, okay, we want to give clear direction to the designers on what it is they're doing here. Are they doing this or are they doing that? So I think that would be more, more effective. Because I don't think there's time in this time frame to um, go back to the estimators, do a whole round of stuff. And as Paul said, it's something that you actually want to consider as many comments as possible in, in totality, rather than pick them off one at a time. Does that make sense as a process? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, and I think I also understand what Paul's saying in terms of like not swapping out certain things for other things. Um, but so can we just add the backstop to the list? Can we add Absolutely. that back to our list and then? Yeah, and actually, Alicia, you said you had other items. so. Uh, let us have yeah. it because I'll, I will include them in these minutes and create this parking lot for this particular item. Okay. Okay, great. So I would definitely like the backstop to be on there and I would also like the fences to be an item. Okay. Is, is that fences put back on or fences taken off? Fences taken off. Okay. Thank you. Because there were, there were two sets of, there was a fences around the softball field. Thank you. Okay. Alicia, did you have anything else? Not right this minute, no, thank you. Super, okay, thanks. Okay, does that sound like a workable solution for everybody? Yes. Okay. So let's see here. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is I am gonna talk about the total project cost and the milestones to the debt exclusion. Um, so I'm gonna, gonna roll this up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna start with the updates to the soft cost budget. So you've seen one, there's one other that we're recommending. I'm gonna recap what was shared with um, council and the milestones. So if you attended, <laughs> a couple of these slides are gonna look familiar if you attended um, the council meeting. Uh, let me get the right slide here. Let's 
Okay, here we go. That things behind things. Okay. Can everyone see? It says recommended soft costs up at the top. Yep. Okay. So, um, you know, we have spent really the last six months focused on this number, the construction number, because it's the biggest number, right? But we have not spent, and this is what I want to dive into a little bit today, as much time talking about the soft costs. Um, so <clears throat> we have, there's three kind of big buckets of soft costs. So there are fees and fees en encapsulates all the fees that are paid to the architect, the OPM, all the consultants who do various kinds of work and a motley collection of things like advertising moving. It's, it's quite a, it's quite a grab bag. But um, right now, um, when I went to presented this at council, I had a number of 9.7 million for that. And the detail is gonna be spelled out in the um, total project budget form, which you will see next week. The only change to that is that we did get um, an estimate for builder's risk, which exceeded the estimate that I had been carrying. And, you know, like the furniture, this is one of these things where the cost of insurance um, is going up uh, disproportionately with the cost uh, perhaps of everything but eggs. I saw an article this morning that the price of eggs are way up, but um, it, like the furniture, this is not a set number. It will get finessed as we go on. But what builder's risk insurance is, it does, um, it is worth understanding this. So um, the, the entity that is building a building needs to have insurance for what is put in place by the builder. So when the builder has you know, put up a steel frame and been paid for putting up the steel frame, unless there is an incident um, of um, where they've been incompetent, um, if something happens to that, and typically this is considered, you know, kind of acts of God, right? There's a hurricane, it, it does damage to the frame. The contractor put it in place and got paid for it. Now the steel frame is owned by the town. So the value of builder's risk is kind of interesting because at the beginning of the project, it's zero. And at the end of the project, it's the whole cost of the project. So um, the, this process is also a bid process. Um, the uh, town's insurer has recommended using a very considered, con very conservative number. So I am recommending that we bump that up a little bit. Then this is the furniture, fixtures, equipment, and technology piece that we just talked about, where we're recommending bumping up the furniture number a bit. Then there are these contingencies, which hard, the hard cost contingency is, in this case, 5% is what I'm recommending of the construction cost. And the soft cost contingency is 1% of the construction cost. This is money that you may not spend, but you need to have it in the budget and you need to bond for it in case you need it. And there's a whole sort of process that happens over the course of the project that um, MSBA provides um, funding for a portion of these costs, but not 100%. So they, you know, they wanna be managed uh, very, very carefully. So Sean has his hand up. Yeah, one question, one comment. Um, I, I think you said we have to bond for it. We have to authorize it, authorize the debt authorize. for it, but, but we would only bond for it if we actually um, expend expend it. Um, right. And I think this other one is uh, sort of goes without saying, hopefully, but I just want to confirm. Um, so that the bulk of the estimated fees are for the OPM and the designer. So I assume mm -hmm. the OPM and the designer are both very comfortable with um, the the budget that's here for uh for estimated fees yes okay i'm speaking on behalf of donna uh, and her team because i have gone through um, their estimate uh, of fees in some detail and we, we actually spent a lot of time in the past week looking at not so much their fee but all the different consultants fees um 
geotech, geo-environmental, hazmat, furniture, you name it. So all of, all of those people are embedded in this and we are comfortable that the values that we're carrying are appropriate for them. Thank you. Paul, Paul you had your hand up. Yeah, so just a technical question. Is the builder's risk something that the town would bid out or is that something that we would expect the contractor to purchase? Well, <laughs> so it's it's different depending on which form of construction delivery you choose. If you choose construction management, you really want to make it part of the construction manager's budget. And that is because that's the best way to optimize something that is seamless. Um, because we're doing design bid build, you really need to bid it out separately. And that's my opinion, that's the insurer's opinion. Um, so I expect that it, it will get bid um, and that process isn't gonna happen until probably, I would say three to four months before construction starts. Thank you. And, and Margaret, just to clarify, this is the town's insurance. It's the town's insurance, exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, again, the worst case scenario is I, I always think like the building's almost built um, and there is some crazy storm that happens. And I'm not talking, you know, we're, it, it would be unusual, but, you know, 1933, you know, famous Connecticut. River Valley um, storm, you know, stuff happens. So that's what it's for. Are there any other questions or comments on this? You know, we 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 had uh, just as a, a somewhat of a background. There were there were a couple questions and or comments on the fact that um, the soft costs are What's a that lower. Called? What's there are where you um, provide for. Uh, yeah. What's it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I did. I'm just saying that 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 the the fees, as Sean said, those are agreed on fees that are embedded in this. So one of the reasons we're not at the 25 percent that we saw six months ago in the PSR added on is because the fees have not gone up at the same rate as the cost of glass, because that's my simple minded way of explaining this. Um, you Just know, quick, so quickly, they're not agreed upon yet though. I mean, with the town at least, we haven't. Right, yet. right, but-, so but, we, but have, that, we haven't so, signed contracts for them, but they're, they're estimated fees that I am able to present to the town. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, Sean. So so Sean's caveat was maybe they could be lower with negotiation, maybe. But but in any but in any case, I'm just saying that that is what's been going on behind the scenes here. Alicia, yeah. Alicia, your hand is up. Yeah. Sorry, I keep having issues with my unmute button. Um, I'm just wondering what the percentage for the soft cost is now. It's a, it's about twenty percent. I, when I did the math for the council meeting, it was just slightly over 20%. Thank you. I mean, I will also say that in, in my experience on projects that I worked on, we've only probably once with a very complicated project with a very long duration had soft costs that were much higher than 20%. So we use 25% at the PSR level, because there's still too many unknowns. But this this number has a lot of um, data behind it. So I just calculated it's twenty point eight percent. So call it yeah, twenty. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So is everybody good with this? Because I'm going to no. toggle to. A different slide. I want to also just for folks who didn't um, didn't see the let's see if I can get this to go. Here we go. So um, for any for folks who didn't see the my council presentation of these numbers, so um, 
you know, obviously this does not include this change of $225,000 that we're talking about to soft costs, but I wanted to just make sure everybody had seen what got presented to council. So again, here's that number again, the hard construction cost. Here are the fees and contingencies and uh, FF and E numbers. So this is where this number is going to bump up slightly. Um, I've done a calculation um, based on the MSBA provides this, you know, detailed spreadsheet, you, which you will see shortly. Um, I've done an estimate, and you know, I, as I said in the council meeting, everything here looks really specific. You should really think of these numbers in terms of round numbers. But let's call the MSBA's grant, you know, forty. It looks like it's about forty-two point seven million, and then the town's share is about 55.3. Um, I'm actually going to be the, the spreadsheet that they're using changed as of December 21st because they changed the ways they were calculating reimbursement. So this is all based on their new form and I am going to be reviewing it with the total project budget maestro uh, Christina Ford at the MSBA a week from today. So um, we'll, we'll confirm you know, that I'm not, but they have looked at iteration, early iterations for me, and they, this seems consistent. So that's uh, what was presented at council. Obviously, this will get a little bit updated because we're bumping up um, the soft cost number a little bit. But then I also just wanted to talk about these dates, which were talked about in council. Oh, Sean, I see you have your hand up. I think this is probably just a question we can talk about offline and it's more for Paul, but it's just about the percent for our um, piece and um, just how we're thinking about that. And if this committee has to deal with that, or if there's a separate, um, I know we've seen some concepts that have the percent for art, but the bylaw has some specific pieces to it about committees and things like that. So I just wanted to raise at some point, kind of we have to think through how that gets incorporated. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it is, it is a separate discussion, Paul, uh, Sean, because it's up to 0.5%. Mm -hmm. And then it's got a process. And it, the whole intention was involvement of the community, you know, that, you know, so um, that's not even a fixed number. And the the 0. 0.5 is on the town share, you know, the, the way it, the way it was structured. So I think that is, uh, it'll be a subcommittee, something will have to be set up to figure out when and where. And I just want to, um, just on that piece, Margaret, before you go to this, we, we received some interesting comments, or at least one person, that you can do this quite inexpensively. And I saw an example that in the Lexington School, if the kids are involved in what you're putting up, some of it can be something you're changing over time. So you don't have to think of uh, permanent installments. And so I think that that will be also a discussion that could be had. And I'm just speaking on this because I was the chair chair of the Percent for Art uh, committee that revised our bylaw and, and was thinking in terms of particularly where we were going with it. So that is a whole separate piece. Um, and it is optional. If we got to a real cost crunch, there, there was a, we could eliminate it, meaning the council could eliminate it. Um, folks, I have just heard a very strange sound downstairs. <laughs> I'm just going to go down um, and check on this, but let me um, let me put on the slide. And Kathy, maybe Kathy or Sean could just talk through this. This is the actions to be taken that was discussed with the um, with the with the council. I'll be right back. Yep, Sean, you can walk us through this, correct? Sure. Yeah. So. Um... Monday night, February 6th, at the town council, we'll be doing our sort of initial presentation on the, the debt exclusion, debt, debt authorization elements of the project. Um, and then that will be immediately referred to finance. And the next day, there will be a brief discussion about it um, at the finance committee. On uh, February 7th, or you see it right there, February 27th, um, there will be, that's when we're planning to vote. There should be a finance committee yeah, shortly thereafter on the 28th, where we'll dive into detail on the debt authorization piece of it. Um, 
one thing I'll also add to this is uh, the CPA proposal for 700,000 for the Fort River, uh, the fields. That will also be presented very briefly tomorrow night um, at, or uh, Monday night at the council. And then that will be discussed in detail and presented by the chair of the CPA uh, committee on February 21st at the finance committee meeting. Just make sure that's a Tuesday. Uh, yep, February 21st will be the detailed presentation. Um, and then it'll be slated to be brought back to the council shortly thereafter for approval. Um, so March 20th is the public forum. Uh, we have any appropriation, the town has to hold a public forum. So that's scheduled to the council on the 20th. Uh, the 21st uh, will be a follow-up conversation about the, um, the debt exclusion. Um, and then April 3rd would be the vote on the, the debt authorization. And then I'll turn it back to Margaret for the final two. So I'm so glad I was telling that was my front door blowing open. So um, yes, so MSBA board, April 26th, and then May 2nd is the debt exclusion vote. So anybody have any questions about that? Paul. I see yeah, Paul. Just, just to note that these are proposed dates. The council hasn't set the dates. The council on Monday will review these dates. They have not set the election. Um, so that, may, that is all subject to discussion by the council. Just want to put that caveat in that these aren't set in stone and that the council acts. Yeah. Any other questions? I am. Oh, Kathy has a question. Okay, I, I have a comment more than a question on um, Monday night, the council was told what those of us who are supporters of the school can and cannot do. Um, and the short answer, as, as I took it, and then Margaret, you can um, come back and say if I'm correct with mine, we can um, be out there advocating for the school. We cannot be using our town computer, <laughs> our town resources, or on paid time by the the, the um, town. So what it means what it means is you know one of the counselors said so like when I'm running for election I'm allowed to go out and knock on doors so I'm allowed to go out and give up talks and the answer is yes. And we can also any of us on the building committee or a group of us can be doing presentations, information um, that talks about what's in this school, what makes it an exciting project. So um, I, when I get back to some of the things that are being set up in a minute, I just want to say that in addition to being on the building committee, any of you who want to be um, active in not just coming to this meeting, but out there talking about the project um, are encouraged to, and we can uh, be talking about the outreach effort around this uh, separately. So, you know, in, as an in individual, so I've been invited to give a couple just briefing talks already um, to subsets of the, our community. So Margaret, did I capture that on what, you know, the guidelines on what we can do as a, as committee members? Yeah, I, I mean that there are more detailed versions of it, but that's the nugget. It's really, yes, advocate, that's your role in the community. Don't use resources, town resources. So, you know, I think um, a, a good example is, and I know Mike knows this, so I'm, I'm not saying this for Mike's benefit, sending flyers home in backpacks. No, <laughs> right? <laughs> Going to a PTO meeting, and talking about the project and how great it is, yes. I mean, that's to me sort of the diagram of it, right? So were there any questions on what Margaret has just presented? You know, one of the, one of the questions we got um, actually following either a forum or the council meeting is, would MSBA see our calculation of their facility grant share would we have some sense that they are saying we've done the calculation correctly given what the budget looks like? 
well before April 26. And I think what Margaret just told us is the answer is yes, um, there's going to be a review of that. So, you know, some sense of what is the town chair wanting not to wait until April 26 official, correct? You know, so we yeah. yeah, I mean, this is interesting because in 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 the past, they've provided reviews, um, I would say, before the submission um, to be helpful rather than officially. Um, and then they've done their official review afterwards. This time I got, <laughs> I was going to call Christina and she emailed me and said, we want, we're going to start doing a kind of pre-review before. So that I think that's a really good and helpful part of the process. And I honestly feel really good because this this budget is in really good shape, in my opinion. Um, we, we, you know, it's been, we've really pressure tested it. Uh, Danisco, the Danisco team and myself, and I feel really confident in th that the numbers are the right numbers. So um, it's a great time to do it. So are we ready to move to um, my, my part of the agenda? We are. Okay. So I, I sent everyone um, a memo. I um, mean, I'm not going to, Margaret can put it up on the screen or I can just assume that you have it. Um, so I wanted to do a really quick report on, um, and I provided summaries on what we heard um, during the, the, three meetings last week, there was a council presentation and there were two forums. And I think um, we had a quorum of the building committee at the council presentation, which was great. The whole school committee came. And so that one. So what I did um, with Margaret's help was collect all the questions that got asked. Um, and some of these were answered during the meeting. Um, so it's not that they were left unanswered. And what I what I propose doing is not clearly the entire list, each one, but creating a frequently asked questions with clusters with answers, doing a draft, getting it up on our website, but also giving it to all of us. So any of us get who get asked these questions. So there were examples on what are you doing about the water on the site? Um, uh, there were compliments throughout to um, uh, we how how is you know what about special needs what what about access what about traffic so we got a lot of really good thoughtful questions why did we choose Port River was another one of them so some of these were sent in afterwards and so we're going to create um, I'm going to work with staff um, and our design team to craft answers Paul. Uh, Mike can help the educators um, get a draft done. And and uh, there was a lot of question about safety, um, you know, in terms of intruder safety. And so it was a description of how the building can be locked down between the classrooms and the front. Um, one, one question that came in was, should the music room be moved up? Um, was it exposed? And what Dinesca can talk about it a little bit, how it's integrated with the way the cafeteria works, but the, those doors to the to the music room can be locked. So, and there's a vestibule that people come in. So the way the building is designed. So all of this, we're going to be trying to capture it in a way that um, normal people can understand and including net zero, you know, how much does that cost how much is added compared to a fossil fuel building? And I'm putting together kind of a net zero fact sheet, again, getting numbers in place. And because of the incentives that are out there, the answer is very, it's a marginal cost with a big return and we get paid back pretty quickly. So I, I just, I wanted to let people know that is happening. And then we also, Margaret, if you scroll just up to the top on the comments, people loved it. Is, is the other. I don't want to do this like there was a critique. People loved the building. Um, they they wanted to be assured it wasn't too fancy, that we'd been careful about the materials we chose. Um, they loved the classroom configuration. We got 
a, an extensive comment on how important daylighting was, and they were glad we did it. Um, one person said, don't worry about three-story schools. They've been around forever. I went to one. I, I loved that comment. I, that I, so another person said, my fourth grader is watching this and says, can I go to that school right now? And, and that fourth grader is currently at Fort River. But, you know, things about bicycles on the site, you know, where would we park our bicycle? And some, some questions about the outdoor area that came in both from the public during the meeting or afterward, you know, um, do we need to do the poured river rubber? Are there other substances? Um, uh, can, is What about the walkways? So one of the things that came out of that, I thought, um, and then I'll say one other, one other piece about presentations, um, was that we could, if people are willing to create a subcommittee for the outdoor play spaces, because as Paul pointed out early on, some of this is we have the draft, but we don't necessarily have every detail. And that could be an ongoing that's because it's going to also going to need some input on what play equipment we haven't talked about what equipment goes there. And we can move those discussions to materials, um, what options we have to that subcommittee without making those decisions now, but let the the commit community know that that discussion is going to happen. So I wanted to propose a potential subcommittee, um, and I put that on the agenda. If and and this was actually Jonathan Salvin's suggestion. Jonathan, if you don't mind my calling out your name on, uh, <laughs> you know, moving moving it to a sub because it's going to be an ongoing discussion. It's not just we don't need to make all these decisions now. And so that was a piece. Then, then there were um, get the news out to the community. So after the forums and the council last week, a uh, couple people who were at from App, the Applewood community, there were questions about the cost. So you've got all of that, and that all of that will be developed. And I will when I when a draft is available, I'll share it with everyone. So if people feel like it's too wonky. Um, so I, I want to get it to, to a read -a readable scale, and I'll work with people at the school committee on anything that has to do with the education program that we can post it on the project site, but make it available. I got invited to um, Applewood by, and I think everyone in Amherst knows what Applewood, but it's an independent living for, for seniors, and they do a Saturday morning briefing, and I am going to be presenting this um, with questions and answers on April 15th um, to that group. And they will, some of the people who are living there have adult children or grandchildren living in the community and they invite the larger their larger community to come. There's been an offer, but it hasn't been set up yet. Um, up here, here, meaning the north part of town where I live, there is a large complex with apartments in it, and there's a big gallery space. And the offer was we could use that if someone can help them set up chairs. And it has a capacity for 100 plus people in it. And they would make it available with refreshments <laughs> to the community. Um, and that has not been set up yet, but that was- Yeah, um, free refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> with with free, free, free refreshments to come and, and they have the facility for Wi-Fi or presentation and the council, the various districts are setting up meetings and any of you are invited, uh, encouraged to come with me um, and Allison McDonald uh, has offered to come from the school committee or other ideas of how we take what will be a package. We have a, a, a presentation package and we can get it down or we can narrow it and change it. But but the kinds of things we've showed at the forum to between now and well before the vote, we can be fielding questions, answering. And if we're out there without our experts behind us, we can always say, that's a great question. I'll get back to you. Um, so I just wanted to, to, to let you know that this, this is being set up. And by next week, I can I hope to be able to give you some dates because um, the district meetings are being set up now. Um, so District 5 is looking at trying to set up two um, for those of you who live in the South. One might be at Crocker Farm and one might be on Zoom. And we got a request to do something at the Jones Library on the weekend 
so that people who work could c come and hear this. So there, the response was get the news out because people were really excited about it. Um, and they were excited about all aspects of it. And I just, I'll stop then because I tried to capture a lot of this in my memo, but one of the people who's been very active as in our public with public comments said, you know, we should really be uh, thrilled with this because we're getting a fourfold investment and in addition to a great school, a net zero school, the community fields and a community resource after hours and also in emergencies. So this notion of the, the whole community as well as our children um, benefit from the project that we all have been working on. And, and I'm stopping there to, to both get any questions, but I'd also like to see what people think about the idea of setting up a subcommittee. And we don't have to get volunteers this week, but we could officially set it up next week if people like the idea. And anyone who would like to be on it can um, just get their names in the pot. So I'm stopping my rambling on. Alicia. Uh, thank you, Kathy. So I just really quickly wanted to voice my support for creating a subcommittee. I think that's a really good idea uh, because we do have so much information to sort of uh, sort through. Um, and then I also just wanted to plug that I think moving into the next portion of this project, that outreach, um, more extensive outreach is going to be really key for us. Um, and so I would be happy uh, to meet with you, Kathy, and talk a little bit more about organizing those community events because I think that's going to be really important. Fabulous. Mike. Um, I, I'm not speaking for or against the subcommittee idea for that. I guess my two questions, and they don't have to be answered today, is one, what area, what other areas might we form subcommittees for? Like, I don't want to, I don't think it's wise procedurally to have a one-off for a subcommittee. And then other things are going to come up where we say, do we need a subcommittee for that or not? So I think having some criteria, because there's a whole number of things that are come at us, fast and furious. And um, so I'd like to take a step back and have structures for what that happens. And the second piece would be, what is the composition and task of subcommittees? Again, not this subcommittee, but more generally. So we, we have really defined expectations uh, for that. So uh, I think it's a good idea to get more community involvement and, and more work done outside the larger committees on this and any number of topics. But I think taking a step back and say, okay, what's our structure? We're the building committee what subcommittees might we need moving forward? Margaret and Donna and others who have been through this before probably have great expertise on that. And then what's the charge of those subcommittees and what's the interplay between subcommittees and the full committee? I know with the school committee, I'm sure in town council, there's some really defined, clear protocols around what's a subcommittee, who's on a subcommittee, what the role is, how does that interact? And I think we just, we should have that in place before we go forward with something because I think it's gonna be a precedent setting one. And I think we wanna make sure we set the right precedent. I, I totally agree with that, but I want to hear from Jonathan. And and so I won't, it's not like next week, it's not next meeting. We just, we, we, we had that as a full discussion and talk about how we set these up and charges. Jonathan. So, yeah, I absolutely agree with what Mike said. I had, I would look to the design team to kind of guide us on places that as we're moving into DD or design development, um, where are they going to be looking for more kind of detailed um, comment or input or review on, on multiple aspects of the building. I, I, you know, I suggested the one on the, the outdoor play areas, uh, one, because we were getting lots of comments, but also because it was one we didn't really have the time and the, the ability to get into in, in great depth in, in this, this setting. Um, I suspect we should, you know, this is me speaking personally, I suspect we should meet again uh, to talk through the, the details of, of the net zero piece as it moves forward, but I am sure there are going to be other components of the interior uh, um, and the furnishings that will also require that kind of slightly more detailed level, um, intense kind of comment back and forth that, that sometimes is hard to get into in this setting. So that, that's my two cents. Yeah, I think the furnishings is a great example, too, where you're really going to want to have a subset of people who really are working in the classroom that are that are part of that. Um, so, you know, th there are probably others, but Mike, I, your comments are well taken.
Okay, so that's terrific. And and uh, thank you all who are much more better process oriented than I am. Um, I, I, I am, uh, point me in a direction and I'll work hard on it. Uh, so I, I think, so what, what we'll do is uh, then the, Margaret can show the meeting schedule, but we're scheduled on the 17th to be looking at the full report and voting on it. And then we will also have um, some potential other meetings. I mean, then May 2nd is at least as Paul pointed out, that's the tentative big date uh, when, yeah. when we get a vote on this. And then moving yeah. forward, this, which subcommittees do we need? Um, we can think of when best to have that discussion in terms of uh, make good use of our committee time that it, we're not just spinning wheels on this. So Margaret, do you wanna, um, we talked about what happens after, you know, how often, how often might we meet in March, April, May, you know, just giving people some sense of, um, of that. So the next meeting is definitely the 17th and Angelica, who is not here today, she's traveling, she has a lot of conflict. She assured me, she said, I will be there on the 17th. So it's an important day because this is one where we're making any final revisions, wording anything on the report, but voting on the report and the submittal. And then Denisco and team will get it to MSBA. So Margaret, do you want to talk about potential yeah. what, what our meeting schedule looks like going forward? I don't know if I can pull up a calendar, but I'm not sure it's super helpful. Um, so, you know, it, to be honest, um, like we're, we're coming to the end of the most intense part for the building committee of the process. So kudos to you all for your robust participation. Um, once we get the submittal in, um, and I've, Donna and I have kind of connected on this, we don't anticipate that there's going to need to be a regular building committee meeting more than once a month. So, um, and in fact, um, with the exception of the fact that we need to certify the minutes of, the, so you're gonna take a vote on the 17th, to submit the document, then those minutes actually, the MSBA requires that those minutes be certified. So there is some very small value to having a meeting in March and looking at the calendar, it seems like March 17th would be a contender. If we skipped that and did the um, scheduled a meeting for April 14th, that would, that seems to be a date that works for the consultant team as well as Kathy and could, could also be a placeholder. And then tentatively, I would suggest, and I'll send out holds for this um, May 19th and June 16th. So one thing that would be super helpful, and I can sort of quickly put this up on the screen, is if, could, if pe folks could take a look at their calendars and see if those dates are workable for them. And then we'll we'll put holds in for those meetings. So Margaret, can I ask on the certification of minutes, um, the, the last two documents where we had to send in for votes, the uh, MSBA was willing to take our town clerk looking at the minutes and then looking at- Actually, you're absolutely and, right, Kathy. So we should not need to do that because they they so were willing to do that. We didn't have to meet separately, to, correct? So I, I, I don't want to skip a step, but I think that's- No, very, you're, very you're totally right. So let me just show these dates. And if people could check their calendars, then again, you know, I'll put holds in people's calendars. And let me just scrap this. Okay, so I think we're going to take out uh, March 17th, because as far as I'm concerned, the only reason for that meeting would be um, certification, which we don't need to do. So then I think the dates we're looking at are April 14th, which we may or may not need, May 19th, which would be our first meeting after the vote, and then June 16th. So does anybody have any conflicts with those? Because if not, we'll put holds in folks' calendars. 
Paul is good. Paul, his calendar is probably the worst of anybody is giving us a thumbs up. So. <laughs> and, and with the discussion we just had on subcommittees, that's potentially on an agenda for May 19th, which would be after the vote. And we're in the phase you're talking about, uh, Jonathan. So there could be some work done on getting a recommendation of what we might need and what criteria, et cetera, for that date. So Paul. Yeah, I just want to mention that. <clears throat> I think that's good to, for the committee to ramp down, but I think that the work of the individuals is going to ramp up because we do have a lot of outreach and communication to do with the people. <clears throat> this is the result of this body's work and you know, really proud of the work that everybody put into it and the diligence that we all put into it. But it means communicating out to the people who haven't been paying attention about the value of it and the things that you've been doing, Kathy. And I don't think it's fair for us to let you do everything. And I think that the more people, like you said, you've invited folks to join you at any of these presentations. I think when there are representatives from the committee there, it gives more power to the presentations, just, just not one voice. So any if you have any of those kinds of things that you're that you are on your agenda, please invite everybody. We try not to have a quorum, but um it is a good, it's a, it's an important, it's also really helpful to hear what people are saying to us, you know. Um, so I think it's really incumbent upon us. We, we, we can communicate information and town officials are different than, than just regular advocates and things like that. But um, I think our work is actually going to ramp up versus just coming to meetings, not just coming to meetings, but you know. Yeah, I, I agree about that. So I, you know, Alicia raised her hand to help me on this too. Yeah. And and uh, you know, I I know Ben, you've gone out to the community at certain points. So I, what Paul is asking me to do, and I'm happy to. Here are dates I know about and events, and any of you can join. But you can also set them up. And you know, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, one of my uh, virtues, or or my husband thinks uh, liabilities, is I have boundless energy, <laughs> and. And, and and I am totally willing if someone sets something up independently um, and wants me to come to theirs, um, I'd be happy to, you know, in terms of uh, ability to answer questions. So I am thinking through that this is um, something that I would really like to see through to a success point so any amount of time so anybody and everyone is invited and i will send every date including district meetings and paul i you know in terms of your saying of quorum i'm not sure we're ever going to have seven yeah. seven committee me but but this is also going to be extended to the school committee that the school mm -hmm. committee wants to get out and be talking about this too so likewise um and there may be some community members the climate action folks said once mm -hmm. At this point, they want they're going to want to rally. So one other place that I'm looking to try to set up um, two possible different places to talk on the UMass campus because there are registered voters in locally registered voters at the UMass campus and the landscape design people, two people are doing the Fort River School as their master's thesis and they've been out walking it looking at our site design and they are going to do their presentation and they're going to announce it to, to the campus with a vote on the school on the may 2nd you know they're just going to say this is a real project so i had a long discussion with them um just giving pointing them to the various meetings we had where they could see the discuss outdoor learning and, and by the way with outdoor learning dave zomack send us a reminder of the other 28, 20 ish acres, Paul, that abut this, that we haven't connected with a bridge yet. But this this is endless opportunities for environmental learning for these kids and the community flowing back and forth because of the other fields we have. So that group had already seen it. They said, could can we make sure we, could we could connect? So looking for opportunities for the students interested in climate and net zero buildings on either the Amherst College Hampshire College or UMass. So, so nothing of that, that has been set up, but all of those are ideas that people, various groups are going to try to see whether we can help activate that. So any other comments or questions? 
So right now, our next meeting is Friday, February 17th. Um, between them, we may get some pieces and we will definitely get the uh, this entire report in downloadable segments um, with detail on costs that we have already seen, but you meant the MSBA is gonna see everything. So those giant cost estimator documents, each was about 20 or 30 pages long. I mean, this, and, and my understanding, Margaret, as you said that we thought your cost estimator and designer that they're going to endorse the fact that we had one go back and actually give us these estimates for that five million. The yeah. other, we so we're we're going to have that coordinated so it doesn't look like they're they were estimating different animals or pieces. Yeah. And, and they that has been completed. So in my summary of total project budget, I will explain the process we went through, and okay. uh, that our estimator has signed off on those VE calculations. So. So any I other, I, I just sent everybody a calculate a cancellation for the tenth. So it's okay. not other meetings; it's just the tenth. Okay. Okay. So does anyone have any before I put it over for public comments? Um, you know, I, I can't I can't tell you how excited I am about this project. So I I just thank uh, particularly thank all the school folks who haven't been attending every one of meetings that went to all of your in classroom meetings, Tammy, on the outdoor, indoor, and classroom pieces. So I am going to put it open for public comments unless I see any hands. And I don't. So we are open for any public comments. And I see several hands. So I bring, I'll bring people in one at a time. Rudy, you're you are with us. Hi, thank thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I just I had raised in a written comment a number of weeks ago about all the issues with the equipment we're going to be uh, putting into the school and what a big portion of the energy budget that will be. And I think that's potentially going to take a lot of discussion between the school department and uh, net zero advocates and others. And I hope that that work doesn't wait till after May 19th or whatever for even a new committee or, and that the net zero committee potentially is the right location for a lot of that discussion. I hope that work can start about the elevator, about the kitchen equipment, all the things that are going to chew through a lot of energy in the school that we haven't really talked that much about. Um, secondly, um, Denisco had mentioned that there was a code ambiguity right now and uh they were going to look at about the energy changes in the energy code and how uh the energy was being modeled potentially and this was a couple of months back you listed a number of elements uh increased roof insulation increased wall insulation possible changes to the glazing and under slab insulation going under the full building as things that might need to be discussed once you got more clarity on the code requirements. And I've, I'm wondering where we are in that discussion, because some of those might have a cost impact um, and whether that's been resolved. I think at one point, Margaret said that that was sort of being carried in the contingency, the construction contingency, mm -hmm. and that's where we would deal with it. Has that been resolved? And maybe if you can give an answer next week, I realize you don't answer public comments, but. Uh, so uh, thanks so much. So I think we need the subcommittee on the net zero, particularly to be meeting uh, now and and a lot of work with the school department to to suggest equipment. And of course, they'd have the last call on what gets actually used because they know how they use things. Thanks. Thank you, Rudy. Maria. Thank you. Um, I have several things I wanted to talk about. Um, first, thank you for um, putting, putting together all that input, both at public forums and on the emails that you've received and for um, uh, trying to chunk out this uh, information to, to launch uh, so that it's not just one big document right before that. that that's great that you're planning to do that. Um, 
question about the uh, old furnishings. I'm sure that even though that uh, these are not the latest and greatest furnishings, they would be much appreciated and able to be used in other parts of town um, as donations. Um, take the best stuff and maybe have that used at Crocker Farm. Um, just don't want that all to end up in a landfill and wasted. Um, the percent for art. I noticed on your um, slide, it seemed to be part of the debt exclusion override, that money. And I don't know that that was the intention of the percent for art. I thought that that was to come from town budget. So um, could you check into that and see where that money would be coming from? Um, and I do have to comment about um, the backstop. It seems kind of petty um, to not add just add that back in it was removed it by mistake it was in it was in oops um and there was good faith um suggestions um by advocates for for the fields including myself to take out a lot of the other stuff that was unnecessary but you need a backstop or else you can't play softball and taking it out is not really a great way to build goodwill which we want to do and members of the community you know worked hard and, and lobbied to, to even get CPA funding. So I think that should be a, a relatively easy thing for a, a low budget item. Um, I want to thank you for, uh, I guess, Jonathan, for coming up with the idea for uh, a subcommittee uh, on outdoor materials. And um, uh, this isn't, as you pointed out, this isn't precedent setting. I mean, we have subcommittees in here for net zero, for materials selection. Um, so uh, I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. And I agree with Rudy. I would love to see the, the net zero subcommittee also uh, ramp up a bit here. They, there's a lot to contribute from that uh, point of view. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, Tony, you're, you're with us. Yep. Hi, uh, thanks. Uh, Rudy and Maria actually asked, mentioned a bunch of the things I was gonna say. I just wanted to get a handle. I, it, was, it would be helpful to know what design progress will happen in the next three months before the May 2nd override vote. And will there be opportunities to make tweaks and changes or is it pretty much set now until after the debt exclusion override? And just to echo, um, thanks to Jonathan for the subcommittee on the outdoor area idea. I think that's that's a great idea. I think there's a lot of community interest in areas outside the school, playgrounds, basketball courts, um, the fields, access on, for pedestrians and uh, cyclists to get to the school. So I think there's a lot of community knowledge that can be shared with the committee to make the outdoor area as good as they can be. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm not, th thank you, Tony, very much. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands. And so Margaret will have captured those and we will, as all of you know, we've been doing minutes and I've been reviewing. So the, the minutes for today will be posted and we will get the minutes very quickly of the, for the 17th out. So I'm, I'm not seeing any other hands. So I want to encourage everyone to let me know how often they want to go out on speaking. I will get you the dates and I will keep that list updated. So what you'll just get from me will be uh, here are the dates, here are the times. Let me know if you want to participate and I will immediately take Alicia up on her offer to figure out what other things can be set up and I welcome any suggestions from anyone and when I say I I would say we um there there will be there's a larger group that is totally enthusiastic about working on this so um including some school committee members and leaders so I want to thank the design team um I I I you've been amazing including that uh, a list that <laughs> cut some of the things that you had proudly put into our building, out of our building, but <laughs> produced, produced a building that is still 
unbelievably exciting and those movies i just have to tell you that the movies someone said just keep showing that for four minute three minute movie script um because it it's a fantastic building and the thought that's gone into it and the outdoor play spaces and listening has been fantastic so uh and with that kudos to you at 10 12 i am going to say we are adjourned Stay well, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.